The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Welcome to Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Some people wear their scars on the outside, some wear their scars on the inside, but the thing as believers, we're gonna get scarred up, and those are not shameful things. Those are things of honor. Suffering for the believer is a tool, and suffering ends the moment you and I see Jesus. Are you hearing me? When you and I see Christ, our suffering ends. Jack Hibbs, in his message, Battle Scars of Suffering, explores the concept of suffering, which can be a tool for sharing our faith. Remember, in Christ, we are more than conquerors. Real life starts now. Is God different than he used to be? More tolerant of sin? More politically correct? In today's world, many are trying to reshape God to fit modern ideas, leading to confusion about his true nature. This confusion has even seeped into some churches. In The Eclipse of God, best-selling author Erwin Lutzer reveals how our culture is trying to make God more inclusive and accepting of things that the Bible clearly says are wrong. But God's character hasn't changed. His truth remains the same, and he calls us to stand firm in it, even as the world around us shifts. Pastor Jack Hibbs says, many people hold to a horribly distorted view of God. Pastor Lutzer shows us how to engage with the culture lovingly, boldly, and effectively. This book comes at a critical hour. The Eclipse of God will be sent to you when you make a gift of any amount to real life today. Visit jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346 to get your copy. Order now. Well, friends, listen, uh, battle scars. Battle scars, we think, are somehow um, limited to those that are maybe recipients of the Purple Heart here in America, meaning you've been wounded in battle, or some other type of very, very aggressive or violent act. But truly, as believers, you and I want to make sure that you and I in our Christianity are living in such a way that we are making such a difference that we are not on the defensive position always, but we are on the offensive. We are to be advancing the kingdom of God. So I want you to be thinking about like a military uh, soldier because the Bible depicts you as that, that you are in a world, you're in a hostile world and you and I are warring against very, very uh, dangerous powers. Of course, they're demonically, spiritually driven. But you and I need to be careful that we move forward in the power of the gospel on the offensive, moving the fight forward of truth. Today, you and I are talking about suffering and all the things that are going on in the world around us, but you don't need to lose hope. The fact of the matter is we should be talking about suffering in light of Christ. We need to understand this, that suffering is a tool that God uses. He may not cause the suffering of this world, but he will use the suffering of this world to be a great and powerful tool to increase your faith, to strengthen your faith. That's a very important fact. Every Christian is going to suffer. Many of us are suffering right now as I speak to you. But that suffering as a believer is actually going to be used by God. It's not without hope. It becomes a honor to have the battle scars upon us as a Christian warrior for the kingdom of God to promote truth. The battle scars of suffering. Let's dive into this study today. Listen to what Charles Spurgeon has to say. Now, Spurgeon, he's a wordcraft, just brilliant. Listen to how he thinks. 
as if we were only meant to be killed and made on purpose to be victims. As if it were as easy and as innocent a thing to slay us as to slaughter sheep. What is he saying? He's saying, listen, you can attack us. You can make fun of us. You can slay us. You have no idea what you're doing. Paul put it this way, to live as Christ, to die as gain. The Christian always wins. Always. If we live, we live for Christ. If we die, we go to Christ. The great scholar Frederick Derrick Kinder put it this way, and I love this. This is a great statement. A revolutionary concept to the Old Testament man or woman of God that suffering may not be a punishment, but a battle scar. The price of loyalty in a world which is at war with God. I love that. I have a friend that was one of the founding fathers of U.S. Army Delta Force, General Jerry Boykin. This man has got numerous purple hearts. He took a 50 caliber round, 50 caliber, you know what that is? 50 caliber round through the armpit. And they were, they were able to put his arm back on. Shot through numerous times, body scarred, special ops, wars, events, from the Middle East to the jungles of South America. And he's, if you, he looks great in a suit, but if he takes his shirt off, he looks like he's been put in a meat grinder. And I love what Kinder said, that in our lives, these are scars from the battle. Listen, don't you want, Christian, don't you want scars from being in the battle? You can't, you can't challenge General Boykin's patriotism. He doesn't have to say a word. All he has to do is take his shirt off. Paul is saying, staying in there as a believer. You got to remember, church, Paul the apostle, church history, church history, not the Bible, church history tells us that Paul's eyes were very close set together near the bridge of his nose, unusually so. He had a very, very large beak-like hook nose. He was very unattractive, bald-headed with hair in the back, very petite, and severely bow-legged. Poor sight, very poor sight. This is, Paul, this is the great Paul the Apostle. Don't you think Paul the Apostle would have been more like, like, you know, I don't know, like Dwayne Johnson or something, <laughs> The Rock? <laughs> You're right, Paul walks into town, and, and people come to Christ. Paul came into town and nobody knew who he was. And the Bible does tell us that his voice, his, his speaking is contemptible. Can you imagine? You guys, Paul's going to speak. Hey, everybody, it's Paul. He's going to speak. And some guy stands up there. When's Paul going to speak? Oh, he, that's, that is Paul. He's going to speak. That's Paul? <laughs> you ever meet somebody, they only know you from a radio voice, and I meet them and they, you're Jack? I envision something different. <laughs> it's funny. That's Paul. And then Paul would, Paul, Paul would go, I want to talk to all you Romans here. <laughs> His speech was contemptible. But, he was, but the scriptures say he was mighty with the pen. Wow. That's encouraging. Let God establish you. But I want to be in the battlefield of this world fighting against evil. God help the Christian who sees it as a spectator option. These young people that are standing today, I'm very encouraged. Look, these two that are standing against the evils in our public school system, they're, they're under attack. Are you fighting for anything that is worthy of being attacked? The old saying goes like this. If you were to be arrested for being a Christian, would they have enough evidence to convict you? Are you guilty of following Christ? Are you guilty of association with Jesus? And then the other thing is this church is that we no longer want our way about life. You say, are you sure about that? 
Yeah, listen, the longer we live, the more sure we know this is that we are counted, accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Don't, don't let that throw you too far off at all because you actually know exactly what that means. Um, he's quoting the 44th Psalm, as I said earlier, but Jesus put it to us this way. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. That is God. Good morning. This is Jack. I'm asking you to live your life through me today. Please, God, keep me out of it. I mean, help me to hang on. Let's go, whatever's coming, but don't let me mess it up. So I'm getting out of bed now, God. So let's live the life that you have for today for me to live. I don't want to do my thing. And the longer you walk with Jesus, the less you want to do your thing. Doesn't go well. I take the application this way. In the world that you and I live in, it looks like we're outnumbered. It feels like we're dying. It sounds like we're losing. It seems like we're alone. That's all through the human perspective. And that's a normal thing to feel, but it's not accurate. I have this question written down in my notes. It's on page seven. Has God worked a work in you enough so that you are both unwilling and unable to walk away from him? Let me explain what that means. Has God, can you say today that God has worked enough in your life that you cannot walk away from him? This is a very, very uh, Kairos moment for somebody that might be here today. You would call yourself a Christian, but you have no testimony of God's dynamic working in your life. And, and you're troubled by that. And so you should be. You know enough that you can't go back into the world and say, I'm an atheist now. You know enough, but you've never gone forward. And I want to say to you today that God, the Holy Spirit is saying, let's go forward now. Let's go for it. You yield to me and let's go. The, the man, the woman, the teenager is, a, is blessed in this moment where they might be in doubt or they might be in fear and you speak to them and you question them and you're talking with them and then you say to them, listen, um, then just put down your Bible, walk away from God, never bring his name up again, forsake everything that you've learned, never go back to church again and go live your life and you know what? You'll always spot the believer in a second when that happens. They'll say, I can't do that. Why can't you? And I have to say it for them. Because he's done enough in your life for you to know that he's real. And I'm asking you, let go and let him take you the rest of the way. He is so good to finish what he begins. John chapter 6, verse 65. Jesus said, therefore... I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. Verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. They just quit. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? You got to love Peter. He's the best. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Okay, isn't that amazing? Jesus just got done preaching a very hard thing in chapter six of John. Basically, whittled it down to this. Hey, you're either with me or you're not. It's time to get up. Let's, 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 let's just get going. You've got to be one with me or you're not. And people heard that and they went, um... Yeah, no. And they left. And, and they're watching. The 12 are watching people walk away. And Jesus, they're just walking away. You know what's awesome about Jesus? Jesus never went and ran after the person that was walking away and said, uh, did I say something to offend you? Uh, can, I, can, I, can, we, can we talk it over? Listen, uh, church leaders, church pastors, boards, whatever. Listen, when somebody, when somebody says, I'm leaving, don't ever talk them into staying. Don't do it. It may be a blessed subtraction that they're leaving. But don't try to convince them. 
Trust God to speak to them. But when Jesus said, so are you 12? Are you, any of you guys going to go away too? Let's just, let's just finish this. And you could just see Peter. Jesus, you alone have the words of eternal life. This is the best deal in town. No one's ever said this stuff or has done the, done the stuff you've done. Where do we go? There's no place else to go. I mean, we've got all kinds of places to go, but there's really no place to go. It's him. Psalm 138, verse 8 tells us, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Is that precious? And then finally this, verses 37 to 39, is the fact that your suffering, listen up, we're going to end with a bang. Your suffering, my suffering, our suffering, under the watchful eye of God, pick it. Listen, don't say it out loud, but what is it in your life that's causing suffering? Is it the past? Is it the memory of something? Is it currently what's going on? Is it financial? Is it legal? Is it relational? Something's going on in our lives. But we're believers in Christ. He's our God. Which means our suffering is only a tool. It's a tool. Michelangelo picked up a mallet and he picked up a chisel and he had a big block of granite and he went to work and he created some of the greatest sculptures that, that have ever been produced in humanity, of course, David being the pinnacle. But think of the chipping. God is chipping on your life. You might be able to say, well, you know, it came about this way. Or, Pastor, I did it to myself. I did this horrible. I made the biggest mistake. God is going to use that as a tool. He's the only one that can convert either the world attacking you or you attacking you into a tool. Because nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ. Not even yourself. You're thinking about, you, you grab the wheel. I'm going to drive now. I'm going to drive now. Don't, don't do that. Let God drive. But even as a Christian, you can crash the car. And you, you, listen, God will see to it. You learn. Suffering is a tool. That, that should be a tattoo. I'm not endorsing tattoos, but <laughs> if you have a tattoo, whatever. <laughs> suffering is a tool. Across your chest, or something, I don't know. <laughs> Suffering is a tool from God. How do we know? Because it causes us to rise above. Suffering allows you and I to rise above. Verse 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. A conqueror is being, I think a conqueror is good enough. He says, no, 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 more than that. Isn't that amazing? By the, word, by the way, the word conquering means an overwhelming victor. It's not that you're a victor. You overwhelmingly won. <laughs> a warrior having been victorious in battle, standing over the enemy. Wow. Could you imagine, Christian, if we understood that the dark forces that were in our world today are demonic activity type of forces, and we stand over the enemy in Christ? We stand in full and total victory? That's what the Bible teaches us. Scarcely do we believe it. more than conquerors. So I'm putting this together with the, the scars of the battlefield and we're more than a conqueror. I want to stand before God. I pray I stand before God at the end and my armor is all dinged up. I want my armor oily, bloody, bent, dented. I'd love to have a helmet on with this, with this big <laughs> dent over here and, and my shield is just, in fact, it's a great... God got me out of earth just in time because my shield was about ready to be worn through. Don't you want to die like that? I want to die like that as a Christian. See, I, know, I understand. Listen, you, scars, all that. Listen, look, some people wear their scars on the outside. Some wear their scars on the inside. But the thing as believers, we're going to get scarred up. And those are not shameful things. Those are things of honor. Like I was mentioning Gen General Boykin, but you, I, got, I got this in Somalia I got this. He was the fam listen, he was the one that got the phone call from Bill Clinton himself. 
Bill Clinton said, go in now. And he said, Mr. President, we never attack during the day. The operations forbid it. We're going to lose too many people. Do you remember the, in fact, they made a movie of it called Black Hawk Down. That's him. And he'll t I got this in Somalia. I got this in South, a South America in a covert CIA operation. I got this. He's like, remember, remember Jaws, the movie Jaws, where they're talking about, where'd you get that scar? I got, the, I got this one. Susie threw a pencil at me. <laughs> Richard Dreyfuss points this one out. The other guy puts his leg up there and says, I got this. A shark bit me right here. And what's his name? Robert Shaw says, I, I got this in the war, and it's some big bad scar. Can you imagine being as a Christian standing there in the day? Where'd you get that? Oh, man, we got this battling the orange school board. <laughs> right? Right? Oh, where'd you get, where'd you get that? Oh, man, that was up in Sacramento. It's fighting for the unborn children. That, that one. Right? Well, what about that one? That's when we sued the governor over uh, churches having to pay for abortions. Yeah, real stuff. The Bible makes it very clear that suffering also, listen, suffering prepares us for what's about to come. And this is okay. Don't freak out. Don't get up now. Usher's locked the door. It's not the time for you to panic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is this where the ride drops off all the way down? <laughs> suffering prepares you. Listen, you don't know this or not, but you love being around people who have suffered. They just don't tell you about it. I'm talking about Christians. I love being around new believers because they're like, bring it! They're the best. You know what? It's the mediocre Christians. I cannot, I'm sorry, I just can't hang around. I can't. New believers, they're like, come on, let's go down to Forest Lawn. Let's raise the dead. Yes, let's go. <laughs> they're amazing. And the only other group of people I'd like to be with are seasoned saints. You know why? We all love it. You know bedtime. Can you tell me a story? Papa? Mimi, can you tell me a story? Kids love that stuff. We love that stuff. Well, on the other end of that pendulum is somebody saying, you know what? You asked about my life. This is what God's done in my life. And they tell you a tale of this incredible battle. Suffering for the believer is a tool. And suffering ends the moment you and I see Jesus. Are you hearing me? When you and I see Christ, our suffering ends. So what are your battle scars, if you think about it? If I were to ask you that question, what would you say is the very thing that's causing you to suffer? For some of you, it could be the looming court case that's coming up. It could be the wayward child or a stubborn, rebellious child within your home. It could be very tragic parenting. My heart breaks for you if that's the situation. It could be somewhere the issue is financial. It's limitless. Do you get what I'm saying? It's limitless. For me, listen, for me and my life, the battle for me is to make sure that I'm hearing what I'm hearing is from God. Uh, my battle is, is this for my glory or is it for God's glory? Lord, don't let me do anything that is not of you and for you. Uh, Issues of life, physical, that's another battle of mine, physical things. But listen, friends, some of us struggle with invisible things where it's just the pressure and the tension of spiritual warfare, thought life, where things pop up that are senseless, uh, making no, no connection whatsoever to reality. In fact, bringing in an, ele uh, an elevated sense of fear, some sort of strange, hopeless thinking. Le listen, left unchecked, that stuff could lead to total disaster. We don't have to do that. Our God is a God who's with us in the battle. Our past is taken care of in Christ. He's given us the ability to be rational as we go to the Bible regarding what's happening around us. Listen, something in your life is causing you suffering. There's no doubt about it. None of us are exempt, but Jesus Christ is there in the midst of it. And you must believe this because the Bible says so. As Jesus was comforted by the Father in his suffering, so you will be comforted by Christ 
in your suffering. We are more than conquerors in Christ, the Bible tells us. JackHibbs.com is where you can find out so much more teaching, and I hope you do exactly that. Until next time, God bless you. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Is God different than he used to be? More tolerant of sin? More politically correct? In today's world, many are trying to reshape God to fit modern ideas, leading to confusion about his true nature. This confusion has even seeped into some churches. In The Eclipse of God, best-selling author Erwin Lutzer reveals how our culture is trying to make God more inclusive and accepting of things that the Bible clearly says are wrong. But God's character hasn't changed. His truth remains the same, and he calls us to stand firm in it, even as the world around us shifts. Pastor Jack Hibb says, many people hold to a horribly distorted view of God. Pastor Lutzer shows us how to engage with the culture lovingly, boldly, and effectively. This book comes at a critical hour. The Eclipse of God will be sent to you when you make a gift of any amount to real life today. Visit jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346 to get your copy. Order now. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.